Alrighty guys, welcome back to another video and in this one we're going to be covering how to view logs, how to stop and how to kill containers, not as violent as it sounds, but that's what we have to look forward to. But for now, let's just go ahead and jump into how to view logs. So typically these are going to be like server logs, errors you're going to be looking at, but we don't have any of those fancy server schmervers set up right now. So we'll just make some fake logs real quick and we will do that using a Docker container and we're gonna create a very simple busy box container and we'll just run ls is the default command. So we're gonna be listing out the contents of a directory. Again, these will just simulate fake logs for right now, just so we have something to view on the screen. So what we wanna do is copy this container ID and then we can run Docker container start and all right. Now, before I hit enter and it actually starts this container, I want to point out one thing. In the last video, what I did is whenever I wanted to start it, I included that little dash A flag right in between these little keywords right here, the start and the ID. Now, I did that because I said that dash A flag attaches the output of this container, which is going to be the contents displayed from this LS command right in the terminal. But now when I exclude that dash A and I run this command anyways, we just get back the ID in, hmm, okay. Even though LS was the default command, we didn't see that output. Again, like I said, because I excluded that dash A. So this is gonna simulate the logs. Now what if we actually wanna go back and view the output? Well, the first thing you need is the ID of your container, which you're trying to view the logs for, and very simple Docker container, I want to view the logs for this container ID. Very simple command, hit enter, and there you go. So again, like I said, these logs are typically going to be error files, warnings, something more um, informational, but for now, to learn the logs command, it's a fine example. Now the next concept I want to go over is how to stop and how to kill a container and the slight difference between either one. Now, in order to understand this concept, we actually need a container that runs a little bit longer than we have seen our previous containers run, and that is because of this. We know whenever we create a container that just does something simple like list out the contents of a directory, it basically starts right up, it prints something on the screen, and then it just exits right away. Well, that's uh, cool for those examples, but whenever I'm teaching you guys how to stop and kill a container, we need something longer to run in the background so it kind of emulates an actual server. So instead of just listing stuff out on the screen, since that's just gonna exit right away, we'll do something longer. And actually, let me show you guys what's going on. We're gonna stick a process called ping in there and we can put ping google.com. And what happens here is it just starts um, going to google.com server and saying, are you online? Are you online? Are you online? And it's just a process that's a little bit longer running. So we can keep our container living for a longer amount of time so I can demonstrate these examples. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna create a container. We can use busybox as our image. And for the default command, instead of ls, since that's just gonna terminate right away, we can throw something called ping Google in there, and then whenever we start it, that container is gonna be running until we learn how to stop or kill it, which is the entire point of this little section right here. So I'm gonna create it, and remember, it's not actually hitting Google server right now, not until we start it. So let's go ahead and start it right now by copying the ID, and do docker container start, and okay. So right now it's started and in the background it's hitting Google just like we saw. Are you online? Are you online? Are you online? And we can actually verify that by running docker container lsa and seeing, okay, yes indeed, the status was created 50 seconds ago and it is up, which means it's currently running right now. Okay. So what I wanna do is I wanna stop this process. Like, okay, we uh, hit Google enough, let's just go ahead and stop it by running docker container stop and put the ID in. Now, what I want you to do is listen to my keyboard whenever I hit the enter or return button. So check it out. All right, I just hit it and, huh, seems to be taken a little bit longer than anticipated. 
All right, that's interesting. It seemed it took around 10 seconds. Now, in fact, that command took exactly 10 seconds. Now, why is that? Well, the ping command, and this is a fun fact, is that it's one of the programs that actually ignores the stop commands. Now, typically what happens is that whenever Docker issues a stop command to this container, that container does some cleanup. Now, if you wrote any applications and you did any cleanup functionality, it just gives a chance for the application to run any processes that are necessary before it just shuts down immediately since that may mess up a few things. Now I say this because since this ping command just ignores these stop commands by Docker, what Docker does is whenever a process is ignoring these commands, whenever you're trying to stop the container, is it gives it 10 seconds to clean up max. And if it's still not stopped after that 10 seconds, Docker is just gonna kill it immediately. So you can think of it like stop is a command that Docker issues to say, please, can you stop? I'm asking you nicely and I'm gonna give you 10 seconds. All right, so why do I say that? Well, if we go ahead and do Docker container start and start that same container and we can see Docker container. All right, so now that same ping one is running status up. There you go. Now, instead of just stop, what I'm going to do this time is kill it with Docker. Now, killing a container, Docker, <laughs> Docker isn't going to be so polite in this case. Instead of saying, will you please shut down? I'm going to give you 10 seconds to kind of prepare, do all that nice stuff. Docker kill is a little bit more cutthroat where whenever I run this, it's just going to kill it right away. It doesn't really care about ping shutdown process, whatever. It's like, yo, you need to go boom, bullet in the head. If containers had heads, that is, of course. But anyways, that's the difference between stop and kill. And also why whenever you run the stop command, you may see some containers hang for up to 10 seconds. So again, a lot of information, but that's the basics of how to view logs, the difference between stopping and killing a container whenever you want to bring it down. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.